My sweet goat, last video, somebody made a comment about my hair. And uh, and now that they made a comment about my hair, I'm wearing a hat in this video now because I'm very self-conscious about my hair, okay? I have no doubt in my mind that you've heard of this game. And I'm also willing to bet that you've formed an opinion of it as well. How can you not? I mean, it's quite literally the most mainstream game of all time. So at this point, it's either you've heard of Fortnite or you've been living under a rock. I can't see you fessing up to the ladder, so let's just say that you've heard of Fortnite and like all your cool, real gamer friends, you probably hate it. But look, I get it. Fortnite is an incredibly easy game to hate. In fact, I don't think anything that's out today really compares. It's actually very cool to hate Fortnite because the fan base is filled to the brim with cringy jerk 12 year olds that think that doing the in-game dances IRL is actually something that can be socially acceptable. The game's poster boy looks like a cuter version, a slightly cuter version of those weird troll dolls that existed back in the 90s. They were the shit back then. And now games publishers are everywhere. They're like, oh. They smell some money, bro. They smell some money. They're like, oh, I think that this, oh, this, 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 this kind of model could work for me. What I'm trying to say is that some game publishers are involved, some big ones are involved in some insane cash grab to kind of capitalize on this new market that's formed. And so now this puts older gamers in a very, very weird position. They gotta poke their heads out of their basements for a second and they're wondering why all of these stinky teenagers have invaded their video games. But that leaves me thinking that Fortnite is actually a net positive for the entire industry and that gamers as a whole should be appreciative of what it brings. And maybe you're thinking, hey, this guy actually looks like a kaka. Maybe he really is a kaka and is just talking kaka, okay? Hold on a second. Here's why I think that, that Fortnite is really, really important to the gaming industry. One of the main reasons why Fortnite is as successful as it is, is due to the fact that it's a highly accessible game. It's fairly casual, making it easier for newer players to adopt, and is available on any platform, be it PC, console, or mobile devices. And while I don't know anyone in their right mind that would ever choose a mobile phone as their primary gaming platform, I can definitely see kids pulling it up on their iPhones in order to sneak in a quick round or two on a car ride into town. So I really don't find it all that surprising that Fortnite is the most played game in the world as its level of accessibility combined with its childish colorful aesthetic snappy gameplay and reward loop make for quality ingredients in a dish perfectly catered for mainstream consumption. But how was this dish served? How did Epic Games manage to put Fortnite in front of a general audience of millions consisting of gamers and non-gamers alike, and in the process, usher forth an entirely new demographic of gamers? Well, to start, you had this cultural merge that occurred during March when Drake decided to hop into some games with Ninja, the poster boy for Twitch.tv. The stream peaked at 628,000 concurrent viewers and pierced the bubble that video game streams inhabited flowing over into the general social narrative present within mainstream media. It also became very apparent to me that Fortnite and Twitch were poised for exponential growth when I heard of the Ninja Drake event being spoken about by people who previously didn't care about Twitch or video games. Shortly after, you had the capital-starved mainstream news media attempt to turn a quick dollar by drumming up some controversy around something coined as Fortnite addiction, which essentially came down to a few extreme cases that involved some awful parenting decisions. And next thing you know, everyone and their mother knew about Fortnite and it became a household brand. Now, Fortnite is the most mainstream video game to ever exist, which has led to even more eyes on the industry and let's not forget more gamers and for content creators in the gaming sphere, more people interested in watching games. My sweet goats, you've got to listen to me. Mainstream attention! Mainstream attention! It's everything. It's everything. Anybody that's selling something wants to be in the mainstream. They want to be in front of everybody in the world. And Epic Games happen to be in the business of selling games. And personally, I find it really nice to see that it's gone mainstream and as a result, gotten more people to kind of see video games as, an, as, as a medium worth investing in. Now you could go ahead and compare Fortnite to fast food by suggesting that people that are playing it are consuming something that's of low quality and that they will be uninterested in consuming high quality shit. But do you really believe that every single investor that's gonna be looking at the industry right now is gonna be thinking they just wanna invest in free to play games? Not every single person who's maybe considering investing into the gaming industry is looking to invest in a way that's just going to maximize on their returns every year. Some of them just want a worthwhile return on a worthwhile investment. And what that is, is entirely dependent on the investor themselves. There's some investors 
who are willing to take risks, who are willing to hit some bumps along the road to execute on a certain vision in mind. Look, I'm telling you, it's very possible that Fortnite's popularity will open the door to an entirely new era in this industry. And I'm just so excited. I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. Yet despite all that, it's still very, very hard to get over how cringy the overwhelmingly young Fortnite demographic is. And it's also really easy to question whether or not it will effectively overlap with other titles in the industry. Will the average Fortnite player ever play a game like Dark Souls or maybe even Rainbow Six Siege? Probably not, but I can see them picking up something like Halo Infinite. Will Ninja come to terms with the fact that his audience is primarily comprised of children and that he can't get adults to do the floss on New Year's Eve. Probably, hopefully, I'm sure he's got a decent amount of self-awareness. I guess what really matters is focusing on why people actually enjoy Fortnite, and that means asking legitimate questions regarding the title in order to effectively tap into what it is that hooks people. If you take away all of the marketing, including the childish and family-friendly aesthetic, and strip it down to its core, Fortnite Battle Royale is a one versus all game that allows players to create elaborate and sometimes maze-like fortifications on the fly, which often occurs during fast-paced combat. So securing a win involves effective resources resource management and flexing your creativity, which makes the experience of winning all that much more rewarding. But the bottom line is that Fortnite is a very polished game that's great at providing a consistent experience from beginning to end. And with all of that in mind, I'm of the belief that the Fortnite demographic can spill over into other video games and possibly genres if Fortnite's reward loop can be replicated in a creative manner. I'm also of the belief that once you enjoy one video game, it's easy to pick up other ones. My entry into the hobby was Super Mario on the NES, and that game is obviously very different from the majority of the games I play today, as my taste in video games has evolved with age. What I'm trying to get across is that teenagers that enjoy Fortnite today are probably still going to play video games tomorrow, whatever those games may be, and that whatever the end result, the mainstream attention Fortnite has brought is a net positive for the video game industry as a whole. Anyway, look, I'm just going to leave you with that, and I appreciate you watching this. And, and if you want to join the discussion, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you want to see more of this, leave a like, hit that sub button, and ding that bell to stay notified. And hey, if you want to catch me live, you can totally, totally do that. Just go over to twitch.tv slash King. It's a good time, I promise. Till next time, uh, I think, I think I might be in love with you. Bye!